Hi, and welcome to this webinar where we'll introduce you to a range of powerful new features in Design Builder V7. These improvements will enable you to do even more in less time. I'm Dave Cocking, and I'll be joined later by Nishesh Jain and Andy Tyndale. We expect the webinar to last around an hour overall, including time at the end to answer as many questions as we can. You can submit questions at any time via the questions box in the control panel, and also by emailing Design Builder at the address here. The webinar is being recorded and you will receive a link to the recording by email, uh, including the slides from uh, today, or that we use today in around 24 hours time. There are lots of new features in version seven, so we can't cover them all. Today, uh, I'll introduce you to the most important improvements through a mixture of slides and also some example models. Here's the list of topics that we'll cover. Modeler and UI, ground modeling, using Kiva, interoperability, model data management and QA checks, scripting, daylighting, ASHRAE 90.1, and LEAD V4 minimum energy performance calculator reports. For those of you not yet familiar with Design Builder, I'll start with a brief overview before we dive into the detail of each of these new features. Design Builder is a fully integrated multidisciplinary simulation toolbox. It's a graphical user interface that enables you to use the global gold standard simulation engines, and that includes Energy Plus, Radiance, and soon Open Foam, in faster, easier, and more productive ways. All of these engines are fully integrated with Design Builder's high productivity interface. So all these analyses can be run seamlessly from a single model. Design Builder is the most capable and mature interface to Energy Plus. If you built your model in a BIM tool such as Revit or even another energy modeling tool, you can import it using the Revit Design Builder plugin or via GBXML or IDF import. Or you can create the geometry using Design Builder's industry leading modeling tools. All of Design Builder's functionality is fully integrated. And that means no exporting and importing data to run different types of analysis. So you can use that one model you already created to run HVAC design and heating and cooling load calculations, energy, comfort, and environmental performance assessments, a variety of compliance and certification simulations, including LEED and BRIAM. Design Builder also includes the most advanced scripting and design optimization capabilities of all the mainstream simulation tools. More on those shortly. And you can also run cost, daylighting, and even CFD simulations from that one model you already created. Version 7 includes changes on the inside as well as those visible in the interface. So let's first review some of the most significant changes to the Design Builder model uh, and UI. Energy Plus 9.4 is now the engine for all energy and comfort dynamic simulations. And that sees various improvements. One of those is a new pixel counting shading method for faster simulation of large models on machines with dedicated graphics cards. Other improvements in the design builder modeler and interface include a new follow path geometry creation tool, snap usability, 
and new customizable color themes. I'll use this model to introduce these new features in the design builder interface. First, I'll switch from this rendered visualization view to the edit screen. For those of you already familiar with Design Builder, you'll see here that the default learning mode interface layout has been switched off. That's why the model data tabs are where you normally see the info panel here on the right. Sometimes this can be really useful because it shows the model geometry and data side by side. For example, when you're inputting different glazing data, in lots of windows, you can easily navigate to the correct window in the edit screen. And once at the correct window or on the correct surface, you can then input the correct data for that window in the openings tab without switching back and forth. I'll just go back to building level. In V7, you can change the appearance of the Design Builder working environment by selecting one of the new color themes. So I'll go now to program options. And I'll show you where you can find these color theme options at the bottom of the interface tab here. You can use any of the predefined themes that you can see here, or you can customize the look yourself. I'll select this architectural light color theme from the available templates. And you can see how that new color theme has changed the visual appearance in the edit screen. So moving on, the new follow path tool enables you to use any closed profile loop created from a construction line to create new blocks. This new tool can be very useful. It supplements the drag face tool, but can also turn corners and follow non-intersecting paths. That makes creating complex curved shapes or wraparound shades even easier. Here you can see a construction line that links the ends of this shading surface and finishes with a closed loop at one end. I'll select the construction lines that form the closed loop and use that loop to form the end face of a new block. So I'll first select the follow path tool and then change the block type to a standard component block for shading. And then follow the path along this construction line. And as you can see, this creates an S-shaped shading device from component blocks. Another seemingly small but useful modeler improvement is the way snap points are handled. You can now see a bounding box around the snap point. And behind the scenes, there's a new sticky feature that helps you stay locked onto the correct point unless you make a deliberate move away from it. This helps you to create accurate and reliable geometry more quickly. A major addition to version 7 is 3D ground modeling using Kiva, which can improve the accuracy of ground heat transfer calculations. A shout out here to Neil Cruz from Big Ladder Software in Denver, USA. 
Neil originally created Kiva, which is now integrated into Energy Plus. In the standard method of ground modelling, a fixed ground temperature is defined for each month. And that is used to define the temperature of the ground adjacent to the building through the year. That's theoretically the simplest method since it uses 1D ground heat transfer. But the ground temperature just below the building is an important input for that method. And in reality, that temperature is rarely known. So this can lead to significant inaccuracy in some models. If the ground temperature data is not available and ground temperatures are likely to significantly impact your results, then a more accurate approach is required. In reality, this is likely to apply to most buildings with a significant floor area adjacent to the ground. Kiva is a validated state-of-the-art ground modeling method where 2D ground temperature profiles are created, as shown in the image here, through the 3D ground domain. Most energy models use the constant temperature 1D ground heat transfer approach that I mentioned earlier. A huge advantage of Kiva is that it doesn't require ground temperature data, which is rarely, if ever, available in practice. With Kiva, Simulations use deep ground temperatures calculated from the hourly weather data as the lower boundary condition. That results in accurate simulation of the heat transfer between the ground foundations, insulation and building surfaces. Kiva also requires minimal additional data and generally doesn't significantly impact simulation times. It's rarely even noticeable. Kiva handles any kind of ground junction, adjacency and location, including foundations, slabs, basement walls and insulation in various positions. Depending on the complexity of the model, you can either use a basic or full Kiva calculation option. I'll now go back to the model to show you some Kiva inputs. These options and their inputs can be found at site level under the site details ground modeling header. A Kiva basic option can be selected where a single Kiva foundation object is used to represent heat transfer to, from and within the ground. This option is ideal for accurate simulation of smaller buildings such as dwellings. The more detailed full Kiva modelling option can be used to select different conditions for different parts of the ground domain typically for larger or more geometrically complex buildings. Both Kiva options require very little additional input data. And the details can be found in the program help. I'll quickly search here using the search term Kiva. And I can then select the most appropriate topic from the results. I'll now move on to talk about the extensions to our interoperability tools in V7, uh, i.e. the Energy Plus IDF import and links to MagiCAD. Design Builder provides multiple import and export options in a variety of formats to maximize interoperability with other tools. That's made easier because the Energy Plus, Radiance and soon Open Foam simulation engines behind the Design Builder interface are all open source. 
This image shows various routes you can take to bring model information from other sources into Design Builder and also to export the model or its results to other tools. The new Import Energy Plus IDF tool adds to the existing GBXML and spreadsheet data import options. It allows IDF files created in Energy Plus or third party tools such as Open Studio to be imported into Design Builder. A new link to MagicAD allows you to export your heating and cooling loads from Design Builder to MagicAD to develop your HVAC design. I'll now review these two new interoperability options in more detail. And I'll, I'll start with a demo of the IDF import. I'll delete the existing building and then go to File, Import, Import IDF model to show you the new IDF import tool. I then locate and select the required IDF file. This page previews the file being imported, as well as the settings uh, that you can use to streamline the import and subsequent modeling. For example, merging of coplanar surfaces, or this create story blocks option, which groups zones on the same story into a block. That makes data organization in the model much clearer and modeling activities like partitioning much easier or repartitioning. Those of you already familiar with our GBXML import tools will notice that we've kept the IDF import dialog the same for consistency. I'll also choose to import thermal properties and then press finish to start the import. Based on the choices I just made, this model will import with uh, its constructions and material data too. Like the GBXML import, the new IDF import allows the building geometry, constructions, glazing, materials and shading data in the Energy Plus IDF file to be imported into your design builder model. This import mechanism supports all Energy Plus versions from 7.2 onwards. Because I chose to import thermal properties and the constructions, glazing, materials and shading data, all that data is being added to the library in the model. And it's also being assigned to each surface in the model. Although that takes or has taken a bit longer, I wanted to use it so that I could show you where the imported data can be accessed and how best to manage it. Once the import is complete, you can see the summary dialog here, which tells you how many blocks and zones were imported. So opening the report, I can see this import uh, model import log. We can see that three blocks and nine zones were imported and there are no open manifolds, i.e. all zones imported a closed manifold. If your imported model includes open manifold blocks, Design Builder's program help explains the implications and how to fix any issues. I'll now navigate to a surface so that we can take a look at some of the imported constructions and materials data. Here you can see that the constructions data has been added to this imported folder in the constructions library of this model. I'll now select one of the constructions so you can see that the relevant materials library data 
has also been imported into the materials library and you can see it here in this imported folder. If you have a lot of data, you could consider assigning meaningful names to the constructions or materials before you import. That makes it easier to move that data then to the relevant construction or material folder. And you can do that by changing the item category from imported to the relevant folder. Going back to building level, I can view all the assigned constructions in the visualize model data tab that you can see here. Okay, I'll go back to the slides now and introduce you to the MagiCAD Design Builder workflow. MagiCAD is an Autodesk Revit plugin and is fully integrated within Revit and AutoCAD platforms. It has a set of powerful modeling functions for each MEP discipline that enables integrated system calculations. You can now feed your design builder heating and cooling load calculation results directly into MagiCAD to be used as the basis for your HVAC design, including emitter and plant selection and pipe and duct sizing, for example. Here's a summary of a typical workflow between MagiCAD and Design Builder. The model is exported from MagiCAD in GBXML form and is then imported into Design Builder. Once in Design Builder, you can define the relevant model data and then run the heating and cooling design calculations. The heating and cooling load results are then imported back into MagiCAD, reviewed and used to inform the design of the HVAC plant and distribution systems. In the next few slides, I'll talk you through the individual steps in this workflow using the model that you can see in the image here. In the first step, you will export the model using the MagiCAD plugin in Revit via this BPS export option. The model geometry and or constructions data is imported into Design Builder using our GBXML import tools. You would then input the model data in Design Builder that relates to running load calculations. Once the model is complete and checked, you would run the heating and cooling design calculations to generate the space loads and airflow rates. In the next step, you export the calculated results to, results to MagiCAD. And once back in MagiCAD, you update the BPS model with the space loads and flow rates exported from Design Builder. The penultimate step is to review the heating and cooling loads and airflow design data before updating your Revit model. And finally, you can see the loads data in Revit to inform your mechanical service des services design, such as plant and emitter selection and duct and pipe sizing. We'll now move on to the next topic and review some of the new V7 model data management features. The model data grid view tool can be used to view, edit, export and import model data. 
This tool has been updated for V7 so that HVAC data, component blocks and solar collectors can also now be read and edited in grid form. The grid provides a global view of the model and is a faster and easier way to review and edit bulk data. When you need to make multiple changes, most people find it much quicker than viewing and editing the model data at various levels. You can also export model data to a spreadsheet if you wish to view or edit the data that way. The spreadsheet export option is also a great way to get data from other tools into Design Builder. The data imported into Design Builder must follow a specific format. The easiest way to achieve that is by exporting the spreadsheet, populating it with the data from other tools, and then importing it back into Design Builder. Let's look at the model data grid view tool in the interface. So here's a new model we're going to use to show the model data grid options. It's a mixed use campus building with offices and teaching spaces with a detailed HVAC system. This is a simple fan core unit system with a cooling tower, a chiller with water side economizer, a boiler, and five zone groups. In version seven, you can now see all this HVAC data in the grid view. When you first open the grid edit tool, you can either view or edit the data in a range of different layouts, which can be system layouts created by Design Builder or user created layouts. You can use this manage layouts option to create your own user layout. A new tab for HVAC data has been added. You can see the default system HVAC layout types here. Now let's look at an example. I'll edit the water cooling coils in the zone level fan core units. The edit checkbox at the top left here enables you to switch between edit and view only modes. And like the model data, which follows normal data hierarchy and inheritance rules, there is no data inheritance in detailed HVAC data. The data view does follow Design Builder's normal color coding though. So the original data when the layout is loaded is blue, but once edited, it becomes red. Scrolling across the grid, we can review all of the relevant data fields. We'll now use the filter tool to edit the data in bulk. I'll be editing the availability schedule for the cooling coils for some of the meeting rooms. First, I'll filter the zone groups to show only the second and third floors. And then sort the zone names. So now all of the meeting rooms on the second and third floors are grouped together. I'll select these second and third floor meeting room rows. And then select the bulk edit option. I'll be changing the availability schedule of the selected second and third floor meeting rooms to off, but I only need to make that change in one cell. And all the rows I've selected will then update automatically with the new data. The cells I've changed are shown in red text with a blue highlight, 
which makes it easier to see what data has been edited. You could also edit other cells before confirming the changes. And once you've made all the required changes, then you can apply the new settings to the model using the apply button at the top right. I'll now move on to discuss the new scripting tools. A core principle of Design Builder is to provide an easy to use interface to the world's best simulation engines. These will just happen to be open source engines, i.e. Energy Plus, Radiance, and soon Open Foam, which means Design Builder automatically provides a relatively open platform. We provide full access to all simulation inputs, outputs, and also enable you to customize your Energy Plus simulations via EMS runtime scripting. The Design Builder API can be accessed through the C Sharp and Python languages, and that enables our customers and other developers to create their own plugins to generate outputs and reports to meet local compliance requirements, for example. EMS provides customizable simulation control to override selected aspects of standard Energy Plus behavior at runtime, i.e. at each time step while the simulation is running. Over the years, we've continuously improved the scripting tools to include pre-post-post, pre-processing, apologies, and post-processing of simulation data. We also created extensions that make using these powerful EMS capabilities more efficient. The scripting tools, have been further developed to enable simulation inputs and outputs to be processed before and after simulations with a choice of languages, either C Sharp or Python. Design Builder includes other advanced simulation options, including parametric analysis, design optimization, uncertainty, and sensitivity analysis. If you're not already aware, there was a significant upgrade of Design Builder's parametric analysis tool in version 6, and the latest capabilities are explained in the program help. There are a number of past webinars that will help you understand how powerful these tools are. I'll show you where you can find these uh, towards the end of the webinar. These tools help designers identify optimal solutions, reduce design risk, and provide clients with confidence that you've done everything realistically possible to optimize their building's performance. In version 7, we've linked the scripting tools to our parametric analysis tools. You can now create custom variables and custom key performance indicators, or KPIs, which provide far greater control of the parametric variations to your model and their output results. The custom variables can be any simulation input. The KPIs can be any simulation output or an output which is post-processed and created by you. The biggest advantage of the new system is that you can write everything in Python. I'll now show you some example applications. Energy use intensity, or EUI, is not a built-in KPI in Design Builder, but it is very easy to set up this and other KPIs using a script. The script on the left here can be used to read the Energy Plus summary tables, 
which can be automatically generated in simulations. That information is used to find the EUI value to use as a KPI in your optimization. The graph on the right shows this in action. The, e the EUI data has been extracted by the script and then used by the optimizer as a design objective. That objective will be used to identify the design variations that lead to optimal building performance based on EUI. Building performance in the context of EUI can then be optimized whilst minimizing construction cost. I'm sure you'll agree this is really powerful stuff. Another application of the scripting tools is creating custom results, which can be new outputs or post-processed existing outputs. For example, you could create a custom comfort metric to meet local or regional standards, rather than those used in the ASHRAE 55 or SEN 15251 standards. The EMS script at the top left here creates a custom comfort metric based on PPD. The metric calculates the floor area where more than 20% of people are dissatisfied. The Python script at the bottom left then links that comfort metric to optimization to be used as a KPI. And that's shown in the image on the right. In this scenario, optimization can be used to find design variable combinations which will provide the minimum discomfort across the building. These new scripting features mean that you can also now write scripts to automate some forms of compliance, such as identifying and reporting maximum overheating hours or maximum unlet, unmet load hours, for example. Scripting can now even be used to automate model calibration. By using optimization to find model input values that minimize the error between measured and simulated values. These are clearly more advanced topics. So we've provided detailed guidance and examples for you in the program help. Opening the help and using the search term help tutorials, I can select this help tutorials page which brings together all of the various tutorials contained in the program help usefully arranged by sections and here you can see the link to the scripting tutorials related to the energy use intensity kpi for example I mentioned earlier that you can automate compliance for natural ventilation summer overheating using the scripting tools. And there's also a tutorial for that. This SIBZ TM52 example shows how a summertime comfort criteria constraint can be met whilst minimizing overall discomfort and cost via a Python script. These tutorials provide step-by-step -step guidance on using the software to meet a range of requirements and are a great way to get started with scripting. Let's now take a look at the version 7 daylighting improvements. Design Builder version 6 saw the introduction of annual climate-based daylighting, building on the illuminance-based daylighting capabilities released in earlier versions. These daylighting capabilities have been significantly extended in version 7. The most important of these new features are summarized on this slide. Annual climate-based daylight modeling simulations are now run directly in Radiance, fully implementing the method specified in LM8312, including uh, dynamic blinds for SDA 350 calculations. 
Running climate-based daylight simulations directly in radiance also means they can be run using multi-core processing. Translucent component blocks can now be simulated in daylighting simulations, and that makes it easier to accurately include objects such as trees or perforated screens, for example. These were previously only possible for Energy Plus simulations, but can now also be simulated in radiance daylighting. Daylight distribution maps are now displayed in the 3D modeler with options for numeric labels to be displayed in each cell and for color palettes to be used. The new display helps to make the daylighting results clearer and to make your reports more impactful. You can now view results in multiple working planes at the same time, for example. Finally, adding to the existing suite of pre-formatted reports for green rating compliance, you can now calculate results and produce formatted reports for LEED v4.1, Daylight Credit Options 1 and 2, and BRIAM HEA01 Option B Annual Daylighting Credits. I'll now switch to another model to show you some of these daylighting improvements in the software. I'm now on the annual daylighting tab showing climate-based daylighting results. What you can see in the model here is the daylight autonomy map for this building, including the number of hours of daylight autonomy in the year. You could also select the ASE or UDI, annual climate-based daylight metrics in this menu. In the display options, you can change settings such as color palettes and also switch on and off each of the working planes. As before, you can use the navigation panel to view results in a specific block or zone. Here I'll view the third floor results. And then zoom in. And I'll also switch on this option to show the individual cell values. It currently shows SDA annual hours, but I can change this to show the percentage of annual hours that daylight autonomy requirements are met. Whilst in this tab, I can also view the annual climate-based daylighting compliance reports. I'll now go back to the building level so I can view the LEED v4.1 option one credit report for the whole building. Summary details are shown at the top of the report, including the criteria required for the available credits. The daylighting data section summarizes the key model data, and the summary results below show that this building qualifies for the full three credits available. Results can also be seen for the individual zones below these summary results. If I switch now to the Illuminance tab, I can view the LEED v4.1 Daylight Option 2 credit report. The report format is the same, and in this case shows that the building qualifies for one credit via this simpler method. You can also view the credit reports for other lead versions, plus BRIAM HEA01 and GreenStar IEQ4.
I'll now move on to briefly discuss some of the improvements related to ASHRAE 90.1 and lead modeling in Design Builder Energy Plus. Over the last few versions, Design Builder has progressively improved and automated ASHRAE 90.1 baseline building and HVAC system generation. You can see the ASHRAE 90.1 workflow summarized here from modeling the proposed building to automatically generating the baseline building and HVAC system, running the appropriate simulation according to the version of ASHRAE 90.1 you've selected, and generating the results comparison of the proposed versus baseline buildings, either in terms of energy or cost. In V7, we've added the functionality you can use to generate your baseline building and HVAC systems for compliance with the ASHRAE 90.1 2013 and 2016 rule sets, including the latest baseline HVAC systems. Design Builder version 7 also now enables you to generate a LEED V4 minimum energy performance calculator report. The report includes the results from your Design Builder model. ASHRAE 90.1 calculations, and that speeds up the whole lead submittal process. Let's take a look at the lead V4 minimum energy performance calculator report that was generated directly from a lead model in Design Builder version 7. I'm not going to review the whole report, just open a few of the sheets. Really, just want to show you that the key inputs have all been automatically populated. Please note that the model we generated this sheet from used SI units, but you can easily switch to IP units in program options uh, if relevant. And if you did that, IP units would then be generated in your simulations and used to populate the report. So let's take a look at the opaque assemblies tab and just briefly scrolling down, you can see that the constructions data has been populated from the design builder proposed and baseline building models. And likewise in the shading and fenestration tab. In the airside HVAC tab, you can see that the HVAC data from the design builder model has also been used to populate the report in relevant cells. Performance outputs have also been filled in by design builder for both the baseline and proposed building. And the summary report at the end here shows that uh, this building achieves an 18.1% total energy cost saving. You can access the updated Design Builder LEED and ASHRAE 90.1 user guide from the program help. I'll quickly find this guide using the search term ASHRAE and I'll select the first item in the list here. And there's a link here to the open the Appendix G user guide, which you can review to your heart's content. And I'll just go back to that help page and show you that you can also access the updated Design Builder Lead V4 Minimum Energy Performance Calculator User Guide. Okay, I'll now briefly show you a range of free information resources and where to find our latest on-demand training content to help you learn more about Design Builder. From our homepage, you can find a range of case studies from across the world 
with some interesting and diverse topics. And past webinars can be found from the training menu here. This Making Energy Plus Viable for Industry Energy Modelers webinar shows you how to set up a model, really good overview of the workflow, which is then developed in this Maximizing the Return on Investment from your Energy Plus Model webinar to include more advanced HVAC modeling. And it also shows how Radiance Daylighting and CFD results can be generated from the model that you originally created for your energy and comfort simulations in Energy Plus. You can do all that with very little additional time and effort to gain the maximum leverage from the time you spent creating that original model. These two webinars provide an excellent overview of the workflow uh, in Design Builder and the integration between the various tools. And the others on this page cover quite a wide range of more specific topics, including topics like design optimization, um, HVAC design of a ground source heat pump system, uh, and also, uh, further down the list, modeling for net zero, for example. There's also an extensive range of interactive on-demand design builder training available directly from our online training webpage here. This is a convenient and extremely cost-effective way to fast track your design builder learning. It's top tips and guidance from experts on what to do and equally importantly, what not to do, will accelerate your expertise in the software and it gives you a, a great foundation in key areas. The content can be purchased as individual sessions or as a group, such as the basic model data group here, um, or you can purchase all the content via this all packages option. All of the options can be purchased either for a month if you just want to dip into a particular topic, for example, or for a year with increasing discounts applied for the groups and all content options. You can repeat the training as many times as you want during your access period. So that covers the most important of the new features in Design Builder version 7. I hope you're ex as excited as we are about the fantastic new tools you have at your disposal in this new release. And I hope that you can see how they could help you provide an even wider range of services to your clients and do that in the least possible modeling time. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. To ensure you're notified about our upcoming series of webinars, and to keep up to date with other important news, please do subscribe to our newsletter and follow us on LinkedIn if you haven't already done so.